Welcome back to Lion Recaps. Today I am going to explain a period epic film called Mongol The Rise of Genghis Khan. At the beginning of the movie, we see that in 1172, a dynasty called the Tangut Kingdom ruled the northwestern provinces of China. There lived many Mongol tribes led by their leaders called Khans. The rivalry between the tribes and their hunger for power led to many feuds, fights, and deaths. There were no rules in the world of these Mongols and a supreme Khan was needed to lead and unify such a people. Yasugai is the Khan of a small tribe in the west, traveling with his companions and his nine-year-old son Temujin in search of a wife for his son. At night, they stop to rest in a friend's tribe. While Temujin is busy tending his horse, a girl named Borte comes to him and asks his name. Temujin introduces himself and tells him the purpose of his journey. On learning that he is looking for a bride, Borte confidently says you should marry me. Temujin's father wants to bring a bride from a powerful clan for politics. But on his son's great insistence, Yasugai allows him to choose a girl from his friend's clan. Before choosing a girl, Temujin is told to look for a girl with strong legs. Because they believe that only a girl with strong legs can keep her man happy. Temujin does as he is told and chooses Borte, their marriage is arranged but they can only be together after five years. Before leaving, Temujin promises to return soon and presents Borte with a necklace as a token to remember him. On their way back to their village, Yasugai and his companions rest near an inn. They are quite cautious because a few yards away an enemy clan chief is sitting there with his men. Suddenly, the Khan of the enemy clan sends a cup of milk to Yasugai through his man as a sign of peace. By sending back a cup of milk through this man, Yasugai indicates that he also accepts the offer of peace. Yasugai's close associate advises him to let his servant drink milk first as he cannot trust his enemy. But not wanting to waste the opportunity to make peace due to suspicion, Yasugai drinks the milk and shows the empty cup upside down. The Khan of the other tribe does the same and after a while, they start their journey again. During the journey, Yasugai gets a sudden chest pain, falls from his horse, and dies instantly. It is clear that the adversaries took advantage of his kindness and poisoned Yasugai. Poor Temujin goes to his father but the other clansmen ignore both of them and leave. Because the clansmen have a tradition that they only follow a strong leader. Now that their leader is dead, their main concern is to elect a new Khan and not to avenge the death of the old Khan. In the next scene, we see Temujin and his mother at the funeral of Yasugai. As much wealth and cattle as Yasugai had, Targatai, his most trusted companion, takes possession of them all. Temujin's mother curses him and says that one day her son will kill him. Targatai realizes that this is true and plans to kill Temujin. They measure its height as less than the top of a bullock cartwheel. According to tradition, the Mongols do not kill any children, which spares Temujin's life. But Targatai promises to return next winter when Temujin will have grown taller. When winter comes, Temujin has nowhere to hide. He remembers his father telling him about the Tingri god who would help him in times of need. So he goes to visit his holy place on the mountain. But on the way, he accidentally falls into an ice-covered lake and almost dies. Then a boy named Jamuka saves his life. Jamuka and his younger brother bring Temujin to their home and feed him. Temujin thanks the two brothers for saving his life and offers to become Jamuka's brother through his blood. Both drink their blood mixed in a cup of milk to prove their loyalty to each other. The next morning they are confronted by Targatai and his companions who are still looking for Temujin to kill him. They kidnap him and take him back to the tribe, but luckily Temujin doesn't grow taller than last time. So they decide to keep Temujin in prison until he grows up. A kind old man feeds him every day and helps him heal his wounds. A few days later, they measured his height again, but he still hadn't grown. Suddenly, it starts raining and everyone goes inside their tents. The old man seizes this opportunity and frees Temujin. Temujin runs as far as he can with a wooden noose around his neck. He goes to the mountains and prays to his god Tingri for help. Temujin sees a white wolf near the god's monument and seconds later the wooden shackles miraculously break. Now the scene shifts to 1186. We see that Temujin has grown younger but is still on the run from Targatai and his men. After years of searching, they finally manage to catch him and put the wooden noose around his neck again. This time, his height has grown considerably, so the chances of Temujin surviving are slim. 
Targatai wants to see him beg for his life, but Temujin, being a self-righteous man, refuses to do so. As a result, Targatai decides to torture him slowly instead of killing him outright. The old man who helped Temujin years ago still feeds him. He begs Temujin to spare his life when he returns to avenge his treatment. When darkness falls, Turgatai comes alone to Temujin and mocks him. As everyone is busy, Temujin seizes the opportunity to attack Targatai and kill him by repeatedly hitting him on the head with a wooden mallet. After that, he runs away to a safe place. Now Temujin is ready to take back his clan and become Khan. But first, he must bring his bride back home. He visits his in-law's clan for the first time since the age of nine. Borte has now grown up to be a strong and beautiful woman. She reveals that she has been waiting for Temujin ever since she first saw him. Temujin receives a coat as a dowry and brings Borte with him. Temujin comes to his mother and sister with his bride after many years. They are welcomed by the family and for a month they live the life of their dreams. But trouble arises when one day they are attacked by the people of the Merkit tribe. A long time ago, Temujin's father had kidnapped his mother from the Khan of the Merkit tribe. Then he vowed to take revenge and he has come here to steal Borte from Temujin. Both try to escape but Temujin is shot and Borte is kidnapped as enemy Khan's wife. When Temujin gets better he knows he has to get his wife back but he can't do it alone. So he goes to his old blood brother Jamuka. Jamuka has grown up to be the Khan of a powerful clan. He agrees to help but asks Temujin to be patient for a year as he is still involved in his clan's problems. A year passes in the blink of an eye and the two set off with their armies to attack the Merkit tribe. They kill all their men and loot the place before finding a pregnant Borte in a hut. Borte has killed the chief of the tribe whose body lies next to him. Temujin immediately claims the child as his and takes Borte back with him. At night the soldiers celebrated the victory. Now Temujin also managed to gather a group of his followers. They ask him to split the looted cattle, and unlike most Khans, Temujin keeps only 10%. And he gives the rest to his soldiers, even offering more to the families of men who die in battle. When two people from Jamukha saw this, they decided to join Temujin's tribe. Since the Mongols are allowed to choose their Khans, Jamukha can't do anything about it, but it's clear that he sees it as treason. In the next scene, Temujin soldiers see a man trying to steal their horses. They chase him and accidentally kill him, it turns out that the thief was none other than Jamukha's younger brother. After this incident, Jamukha forgets that they are blood brothers and makes it his mission to kill Temujin. He joins hands with another clan and attacks Temujin's clan. Temujin knows that his men cannot win the war because they are outnumbered. Yet he sends away the women and children and forces the men to fight with all their strength. After killing several opponents, Temujin is finally captured, Jamukha still calls him brother and urges him to beg for mercy. He doesn't want to kill anyone who still has strength and pride, so he makes him a slave and sells him to pimps. Temujin and the rest of his men are led to walk several miles across the desert to reach a city ruled by the Tangut dynasty. They are then placed in the market so that people can check and buy them as per their wishes. A high official of the family comes to the market one day and shows interest in buying Temujin. However, his mentor monk sees the Temujin and can tell that he is not an ideal person to be enslaved. Believing that Temujin could lead to the end of the powerful Tangut dynasty, the buyer laughs at the monk's statement and buys Temujin anyway. He is then kept in a cage as a lunatic who is mocked by the people. The monk visits him every day and begs for forgiveness. He made a deal with Temujin that Temujin would not destroy the monastery when the time came if he found Borte. While searching for Borte in the desert, the monk faints and dies. Fortunately, Borte finds the monk, who recognizes the necklace she has had with him for many years. When she finds out that her husband is still alive, she goes to the city to find him. Since Temujin is easily visible to people, it doesn't take Borte long to find him. That night, she bribes a guard and helps Temujin escape. Temujin is surprised to see that his son has grown up and Borte has a second daughter. Borte was forced to live with another man to support her children. Temujin loves her even more because of her sacrifices and tells the little girl that he is her father. A family of four returns to their home in the countryside and lives happily ever after for a month. 
children love their father and play with him all the time. Then one day Borte said that all Mongols are the same, they steal, rob, and kill. It's a small thing, but it has a profound effect on Temujin, who decides to leave his family to unite as many tribes as possible. And make rules and laws in the Mongol world, even if he has to kill half the tribes for it. There are three basic rules that they have to follow, never kill women and children, fight enemies to the last, and never betray your Khan. Scene shifts to 1196. As Temujin had promised, he managed to rally a large Mongol army to his side. He unites many tribes to form a huge clan of his own. Now the only obstacle in Temujin's path to becoming a powerful emperor is Jamukha, who has a large army of followers behind him. Today, both brothers are standing on the battlefield with their armies for a final battle. The war begins and Jamukha hastily sends the first batch to fight. Temujin had planned the entire battle while Jamukha was careless and drunk on power which killed many of his men. After several hours of long and hard fighting, Temujin wins and captures the surviving enemy army, including Jamukha. Instead of killing the soldiers, they are taken as Temujin's followers, bowing makes them grateful and loyal to their new Khan. The elder who once helped him escape is made the clan's advisor, leaving only Jamukha to decide. The brothers sit together and talk about how far they have come in life. Jamukha proudly reveals that if he were in Temujin's position, he would have killed his enemy. This further proves that he and Temujin are not the same as Temujin allows him to run away. Temujin forgives him for his brother's respect and the haste he had made to build an army and lets him go. Then we see that Borte is reunited with Temujin along with her two children and they all live happily together. Finally, there is a tradition that in 1266 Temujin was made the Khan of all the Mongols and was named Genghis Khan. As he had promised, he wiped out the entire Tangut dynasty and rebuilt the empire. But left the monastery as requested by the late monk. He later became the founder of the entire Mongol Empire, the largest contiguous empire in history. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.